Speaking of basic politics, and I want to talk a little bit about the IDC, and I want to get to uh, to, to Botham Jean too because that story is amazing. But and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but uh, I couldn't help but notice, and this is it was a total coincidence. I mean, I you know uh, we have talked in the past about you know getting into a regular rotation, and I and I I've, I've been remiss in like sending some type of calendar, but uh, you were up for this Friday, but just coincidentally. <laughs> I watched you get in on Twitter <laughs> into a uh, little um, uh, a tiff with uh, with um, some of who we refer to as the the dumb dumb left uh, around here, <laughs> and um, and and really like it, it's uh, a, a, at one point it moves from just sort of like dumb dumb to sort of a a, a willful ignorance that I think is is yeah. is really I th- the more this continues I start to think this is really you know this is about uh, this is about a certain uh, you know careerism and maybe yeah. careerism is in the other way where it's just generating money and yeah. um yeah. It, it, and and of course uh, you know one of the people we're talking about is uh, is Jimmy Dore who who mm-hmm. who, who started um, the, this sort of path he's on. Uh, that has uh, included, um, you know, uh, pursuing the Seth Rich conspiracy, the yeah. uh, idea that uh, uh, P- uh, Hillary Clinton had um, um, uh, Parkinson's. Um, yeah. I mean, I know that he was like dabbling in that Pizzagate stuff on, when he was on that conspiracy podcast, but I, I, yeah. I, I just assume that was more about like, you know, sort of him being somewhat comedic maybe, but... Um, you know, I it, it, the 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 double downing on this stuff, the uh, the the complete disempowerment. I mean, look, you know, one of the things that we saw about one of the the, the elements that we saw in New York State, for example, is that there is a still a massive and 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 I don't agree with, but a but a but a massive in some ways semi blind and myopic. Democratic uh, partisanship, and you got eliminated half a dozen Democrats mm-hmm. who have stood in the way of real progressive. You want to call it some policies would be uh, very uh, much considered, you know, socialistic policies in New York State, and right. they were eliminated not by a member of the Green Party, but by Come people on, coming in who call themselves Democrats, who clearly have um, uh, policies to the left of where the Democratic mainstream has been over the past couple of decades, and are eliminating those people and taking them out and are going to have implications for this state down the road. Even with Andrew Cuomo as, as governor, the fact of the matter is that the whole farm team that's being created, the next Andrew Cuomo, the next, you know, Lieutenant Mm. governor is coming from these people and they're building networks. And this is the way that you get change. It's the way you do politics. It's not as, it's not as self satisfying. It's not, uh, it doesn't happen overnight, but this is the way you do it. And, to ignore that dynamic because uh, it gets you clicks, I find is just um, is ridiculous. It's it- you know, <laughs> it's, I mean, you've, you've you've covered it all. I really don't even have to say much because look at the IDC last night. Six are gone, and they're gone from Democrats who ran to the left of them, far to the left of them. I mean, that, that's an understatement. And that what's what's being sold to the dun by the dumb dumb left to the dumb dumb left is political apathy and it's wrapped up in this veneer of yeah. being politically intellectual um which is it's funny to say intellectual and jimmy Dore in the same sentence but this is what this is how people take it they take jimmy Dore seriously and if you take him seriously the the logical conclusion to what he's asking you to do is apathy nothingness and and we don't have time for do nothingness because that's literally what is i mean there's too many things at stake right now there's there are too many issues at stake. Every theory that Jimmy gave about what's going to happen if Donald Trump got elected has fallen. It, it, it has not come to. And now we're stuck with a President Trump 
and a Jimmy Dore. I mean, I, I mean, you already called his name, so I hope you don't mind if I call his name several more times. Okay. We're stuck with a Jimmy Dore who relentlessly protects Donald Trump from criticisms uh, from the left. And I'm like, what's really going on here? And, and I realized um, it took me too long to realize because a lot of times I just don't feel like getting into confrontations uh, until I do. And then when I do, it looks like what it looked like earlier this week. But I realized this is all for show. There is a group of people, particularly who um, gather around YouTube, who are looking for the left version of Alex Jones. They're looking for someone who could just keep them angry, regardless of information, regardless of the truth, regardless of the fact. If you can spin everything to be the fault of Hillary Clinton two years into Trump admi Trump's administration, then there is an audience for you to make a lot of money off of. And Jimmy Dore is um, he's profiting off of it. And, and I will say this. I can keep people angry. I don't need to, you know, like I can keep people <laughs> angry. And uh, certainly um, I, I, uh, I, I was critiquing uh, Barack Obama on national television before Jimmy Dora had a YouTube channel. Mm. Uh, the the and, and for years we would be talking about what was going on uh, uh, with these folks. But this is it's completely disempowering. And, and I think you're yes. absolutely right in, in your point that it's it basically is um, it, it is apathy in terms of their their efficacy and their impact. And mm -hmm. I would say it goes even further than that. Right. Because, look, if you tell people that there is no import to the courts, if there, it, <laughs> it, that it doesn't matter that Donald Trump will and, you know, I if the Democrats get the Senate, then it's still just a disaster. Right. Um, yeah. If if um, if they don't, we're still going to have two more years of Donald Trump putting people on the federal judiciary at a record pace. Mm. He is one out of every seven judge uh, sitting uh, in the circuit courts. This is the second and, and these folks handle a lot more cases in the Supreme Court. Um, in addition to the Supreme Court, the, there are no opportunities to create any type of, of, of change from legislation right. if you have a court system that's saying that you can't do this because this is unconstitutional. Right. You can't force the states to provide Medicaid to uh, people. You can't have a single, you can't, uh, you know, basically outlaw private health insurance. I mean, these are all things that we can expect from a, from a court that has a, a Brett Kavanaugh on it. And there's every, and if it's not Brett Kavanaugh, it's going to be somebody else who could right. very well be just as bad, if not worse in terms of these issues. Right. And, and, and this is what, this is, this is what it sums up to. It sums up to making a case against the Democrats and it, it tacitly gives support for Donald Trump and everything that he's doing, because just by taking them out, taking out all of the people who follow the same logic as Donald, uh, as uh, Jimmy Dore, if you take them out of the equation, I mean, that's still a net win, right? The, you never had to convert this group to Republicans. All you had to do was discourage them from participating. Yes. And all you had to do was mobilize them in opposition to anything Democrats attempt to do that they claim they want like this week has been or last week it was all about oh barack obama doesn't really want medicare for all and i'm like i don't care what barack obama actually wants deep down inside all i care is that he gave an endorsement for medicare for all last friday and that's something that we could take to the bank and we can use politically against any democrat who's still standing on the fence because they want to protect uh, barack obama's obamacare legacy well no now we have a weapon to use and what we're seeing instead is a bunch of people from the dumb dumb left who we're saying, well, Barack Obama doesn't really want it. Democrats aren't going to really do it. And then you have the Green uh, Party getting in with Jill Stein saying, oh, remember what Democrats did in, in California? I'm like, all of you are contributing to us not moving forward with Medicare for all when you could have just taken his endorsement. Forget about it. I didn't even listen to anything else he said in the speech. I don't even care what he said right. except for Medicare for all. And that's what we should do. And, and instead, we have the Jimmy Doors of the world and all of his constituency um, just trying to slow down the process because it's, it's it gives the appearance of, I don't know, I, I can't even well, say intellectualism. You know, look, it's, it's, I don't know no, what it is. It is, it is, it is, it's, it's masturbatory 
And because look, <laughs> there is a tremendous value in my estimation to looking back on the things that the Obama administration did wrong. And whether you want to say they did it wrong or they did it because of a, a skewed perspective on the world than they did in terms of like the banking. That is, mm-hmm. that to me is um, a, 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 an important and necessary exercise so that um, we are, we have the energy uh, and the, 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 the understanding as to why we need to curb financial institutions. And you could say that about any other issues, but you're absolutely right. If that guy says the words Medicare for all, all you do is you cut that out and you put that on a, <laughs> on a billboard and that's it. And you throw that's away it. the rest of the stuff because <laughs> you, you don't talk about, there's no value in saying what's in his heart. Look at that's the, it. Look at the smirk on his face. He clearly didn't mean it. Like that's this stuff is this is childish stuff. And it's, it's, you know what I call it, I call it useless contrarianism. That's what it is. It's useless contrarianism, and they're doing it for it's performative and it's for clicks and it's for them to get uh, I guess bona fides and their little circle. The problem is is that people like me I, I'm generally quiet about stuff until it's too late and it's grown, it's festered into a cancer like the H. A. Goodman cancer that was on uh, uh, the progressive movement. And so you know we have the people like me. We have to speak out. I know you guys have been speaking out about it for a while. I uh, watched some really good clips from Michael Brooks about it. But, you know, we can't sit back and just give them space to grow this ignorance because it has a direct effect, uh, particularly on the power of social media to move policy and to move activism. They are they are throttling it yep. and they're doing it for useless contrarianism. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, the idea the idea that someone would celebrate uh, Tucker Carlson because he's supposedly uh, anti war <laughs> is just the, one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my <sighs> life. Every single thing he does is in promotion of uh, those who would uh, promote more war. Uh, yeah. But because he has a, a he has a comment or two where he says like maybe we shouldn't be spending this money. Like it, it, the uh, it, it's it's bizarre to me. It is really bizarre. But um, all right, let's move past that.